Alright, so we've all heard about white flight, and that white people, when there becomes a tipping point, which seems to be about 25%, uh, according to um, the author of the tipping point, um, his name escapes me, but whites will leave neighborhoods when black people move in at a certain percentage, it's probably like 20, 25% or so, it's kind of low. But people may wonder, um, how do black people really buy into the uh, predominantly white neighborhoods? Uh, in a lot of ways, the black people may be prevented. There are a lot of uh, strategies that white people use uh, in certain neighborhoods to prevent black people from from uh, getting in there, okay, um, from moving in. Um, it may maybe be a price thing or uh, threats and intimidation. Um, there, but uh, it's it's all done subtly. It used to be very open and uh, out there um, in the earlier to mid 1900s, and then. Uh, it had to become more underhanded and underground uh, for white people to prevent black people from uh, moving into to neighborhoods. But still, black people managed to. And how did that happen? But with sympathetic real estate agents to the black cause. Sy sympathetic white real estate agents. They would... They would help out the black people when no one else would, and and uh, and I've been reading this uh, can't stop, won't stop, uh, and it's page uh, 307. They're talking. He talks about how uh, black people would join together, and and then bre break into the white neighborhood, and they would buy the uh, the neighborhood block by block. All right, as a group. And then uh, when they reached uh, the, the threshold tipping points, you would see a lot of white flight. Uh, they called it a Negro invasion, which would be opposite. Uh, a different way to um, define white flight, because it's not just whites moving out because of blacks. you got to take the black perspective, too. They, they were... Um, uh, moving in uh, by by their own motivations, they they, they were uh, intentionally moving into these these neighborhoods um, for their own reasons, uh, maybe because they're they're just considered better neighborhoods. All right, one man talked about how he profited from uh, the white flight fears in that he would have a, a white friend. It's very helpful for black people to have the white friends. Um, he would, he would uh, help buy a piece of property, maybe a cheap piece of property, maybe just an open little plot of land. And then the black guy would go out there and just, he would look like he was surveying the land. Some, some white person would would uh, come by and and uh, the black person and and if the per white person looked like they were uh, um, interested in, in purchasing it, uh, the black person would say, "Yeah, yeah, man, I'm I'm developing it." Uh, and then this guy said the next day he would get a ton of offers uh, above the price he paid for the the piece of property, as as like a white person's attempt to like. To price squeeze a black person out, and he said he would buy a two hundred dollar uh, property that's adjusted for the the years that he, he was buying. I'm not sure. There's no exact date, but he'd sell it for eight hundred or nine hundred dollars. It's a pretty good scheme to have. It's it's more of a real estate scheme, and you know that those kind of opportunities are still going on. There's there's still a, a lot of towns and, and cities that have a, a high proportion of white people um, but I mean it, it depends on, on where you want to move it is it's a real estate game and some some real estate is, is considered better than others just because white people live there doesn't mean it's the best kind of real estate to have but if you're trying to take advantage of a 
money-making opportunity, it's something to consider.